Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling in Dash for the 4th of March. So glad you're here. You need another cup of coffee? I need another cup of coffee. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm excited. We have some new people watching the channel and also some new people doing life journaling together. So that's exciting. And a shout out to Haresh in India who joined us for a special class on Friday night, our time, Saturday morning, your time, Haresh. And it was so good to, to be able to teach life journaling to you and nine other friends there in India. We've done it with Africa and other places. So if someone needs a special class, just let us know right there in, in links in the comments or send us an email to lifejournalingandash at gmail.com. We'd love to set something up for you. And also soon we'll be doing a how-to video so that you can be a part of Life Journaling and Dash, which allows us to use soap every day. <laughs> Let me explain. Soap is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And before we get into this one for today, this reflection called Forgive Others, Yvela, would you lead us with a prayer to start with? Yes. Lord, thank you so much for the wonderful blessings that you've given us. Uh, for us, Lord, the rain has stopped and the sun is shining, so thank you so much. Um, thank you for giving us your word that we can read and um, share with others what you're teaching us. And Lord, please let our word be encouraging to others. Amen. Amen. And then this morning I talked to Brandy and Regine. Renita. Renita. Brandy's from um, southern states in the mainland, America. Renita's from Aiea here on the island beautiful young lady with a beautiful young daughter and brand is a beautiful young lady with a beautiful dog <laughs> <laughs> which we miss our dogs but what you share with us about forgive others forgive others okay so i'm pulling from mark chapter 11 verse 25 where it says in the word and when you stand praying if you hold anything against anyone forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins my observation we are to forgive everyone not just um, a few people but just like we want to be forgiven by God of our mistakes and our sins how many everybody how will I be made differently by what I've read today well my application is this the scripture reminds us that we must forgive others again not just some people but all people ouch that hurts because I know God is real and that Jesus died on the cross as a sacrifice for my own sins, the sins of David. Before Jesus uh, died on the cross, they would have sacrifices of animals and such. And that was how you receive forgiveness. But Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice now. He died on the cross and it washed away all our sins. That's why you say washed away by his blood. It was his blood that was shed. And we are given forgiveness through this act. My prayer, Lord, help me to forgive people when they are mean to me, helping to not just keep a list of how many times people treat me wrong, but to forgive them. Help me to teach life journaling to others. Amen. Da -da -ding. Why did you add that in the end about adding, teaching people about life journaling? Well, it says that when we pray, we should ask what well, we want of the Lord and he'll make it happen. And one of the most effective ways for me to share the gospel is through teaching others to do life journaling. It's kind of like, I'm not going to be the guy down on the street, unless God changes his mind, but I'm not going to be the guy down on the main highway here in Hawaii, Nimitz, holding up a sign that says, repent, follow Jesus. But what I've seen through my over 20 years now of doing life journaling, is that I can meet somebody for like 10 minutes, share with them how to do the reading, how to do this, what we call life journaling or reflection period, and they can turn around and teach to other people. And I've seen that, I've seen the fruit of that. So that's why I specifically ask, help me to teach life journaling to others. And he doesn't know that I overheard a conversation with him and Dennis today, and I heard Dennis say, what is this? life journaling it was that before i gave him the youtube channel <laughs> so that's why i said earlier when we started talking today that yvelle and i will do a how-to life journaling we'll do two versions we'll do a short one 
in case you forget, you can go back to it, but also a longer version with some of the interviews that we've uh, conducted with people that do life journaling all over the world. And we'll put that up on the channel so that other people can join us. And it'll be easier for you to send that link to somebody that needs to know how to do the life journaling. I wrote from Mark 11 verses 12 through 14. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. My observation. I've never understood this story before, so I decided to write about it today and do a bit of research. What I learned from gotquestions.org was fig trees in this area have fruit 10 out of the 12 months. So most of the time they do have fruit on it. So fig trees produce fruit more than just during this one main season. Second, figs are first produced from a tree, then the leaves. Therefore, when Jesus and his disciples saw the leaves, they assumed there would be figs. So when Jesus cursed the tree and told it that it would never have fruit on it again, Jesus, as always, was teaching us a lesson. One lesson that Jesus was teaching us was about looking on the outside like a Christian, but not bearing fruit on the inside. How can I apply what I have read to my life? Well, it's easy to act like a Christian. I mean, I've been going to church for 61 years. Guess how old I am? 61. I have been journaling for almost 25 years. I know what a Christian should look like. However, I never want to look like a Christian on the outside and not look like a Christian on the inside. In Galatians, it tells us the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is a result of the Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit's presence in my life as a Christian. In order for these fruits to grow in season and out of seasons, during the highs and lows of life, I must be consistent with my time in the Word of God. My my application is to continue journaling every day so I can bear fruit. My prayer, Lord, I know that I blow it daily. I know that as I grow in you daily, you reveal to me areas where I am weak and areas where I am growing. You forgive me when I ask you to forgive me. Please continue to help me grow. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why People say I'm David, journal night, is because I believe in life journaling so much, but you can have other reading plans and stuff like that. But what I have seen is when people don't have a system for doing some sort of reflection or devotion daily, then they fall away from it. And as it says in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 18, that professing to be wise, they became fools and God gave them over to their corrupt thoughts. And so if people don't have a system in place for reading the word, if you don't have that Tuesday Bible study or whatever it is you do that you're consistently in the word, whether it be listening to the YouTube channel, two people in Hawaii or, or sharing with a friend what you're getting out of devotions, you can slip away from it. And I think for me, and I've mentioned it many times, what I like about this is that when you stop and you read and you talk about what's going on, but when you say how I'm going to take what I've learned and have it make a difference in my life, how am I going to apply it, then it becomes, that's when you become a doer of the word and not just a listener. And we know as educators, um, today I was sharing with somebody about doing journaling and they said, accuse me of being a doctor. And I said, well, no, but she is. I was talking about you having a, a, a doctor, PhD in education. We know this from our background research that by learning something and then sharing something, all of my hands there are on the right side, going to the left. If you learn something and you teach something or you learn something and you share something, 
your brain is engaged and you're going to have a better opportunity to remember that information. And if you continue to learn and share, you will continue to learn and grow. And we wanna do that. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be growing by reading Deuteronomy chapter one and two, and also Mark chapter 12. And dear, would you close this out with a word of prayer? Sure. Lord, you are so awesome. You are so great. Lord, just to put people in our past that we could talk to them about reading the Word of God. Um, we know from our own experience how important it is to have the Word of God in our heart so that when things come our way, we can just recall what you've said to us and know the promises that you are taking care of us. Thank you again for this opportunity that you've given us to share with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.